Let's come into our mountain pose and get ready for our warm ups. So toes straight ahead, knees going toward your second toes, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders lined up. Activate your core, get those ribs toward your spine and up and just feel that spine lengthen as you do that. And shoulders back and down. Reach your crown up toward the ceiling, keep opening that spine and don't forget to breathe. <clears throat> Spread your toes, inhale and bring your arms to shoulder level. Exhale, hands to your heart. Keep those elbows back, keep the chest open. Inhale, arms out to the front. And then exhale, the hands behind you. Just clasp the fingers gently and push them down. Lift your heart. Feel the back bend just gently. Keep the neck stretching. And then pivot at your hips, come on over. As you get into your pivot, move your chin around, release your neck. Bring your hands toward your head to get those shoulders moving around. And then bend your knees slightly and lift your ribs, sitting bones down and wind your way from the bottom of the spine all the way up. And again, into the back bend, upper body only, spreading your toes. Don't lift your chin too high. Keep the back of the neck stretching along with the whole spine. And then after a few breaths, come on back up into mountain pose. Take a moment there, feeling that circulation increasing. And we'll do it again. Arms at shoulder level, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, and then clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So shift the fingers in one position over. Lift your heart into the back bend, stretch back through the spine, pivot at your hips, Exhale on deep into that pivot. And again, as much as you'd like, moving whatever needs to move to release anything. And then once more, wind your way back slowly from the bottom of the spine to the back bend, just gently lifting out through the crown. Take a moment breathing, opening your heart, and then inhale upright into mountain pose. Take a moment again, just feeling that circulation through the spine and your body. And it's time for our side stretch. So let's keep one hand down, the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Lean over to the side, push the foot you're leaning away from down, make sure you're not leaning forward, and reach out the head and the hand, feeling those ribs stretch a little bit more and that sideways motion to your spine. Inhale, upright, release your arm. Take a moment to notice the difference on the two sides and do the other side. Arm out, palm to the ceiling, hand over your shoulder. Push the hands away as you lean, no twists. So remember, don't lean forward. Just slide the hand along your leg and out through the crown. Push the foot you're leaning away from down. Feel the ribs stretch and that spine move sideways. Inhale back up, release into mountain pose. Take a moment, feeling that opening through the sides as well as the spine. Spread your toes, stretch your spine apart for our twist. Arms again, shoulder level, palms up, hands above your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, bring the arms by your ears, stretch the spine apart again, and turn into a twist. Take a breath, exhale, pivot over. Keep the weight on both feet, even as you lean over toward one side. Keep your arms by your ears, lift your sitting bones, stretch your legs, lengthen down through the crown. Inhale in the twist all the way up into that upper body only for your back bend. <clears throat> Remember, be gentle with your low back glutes twisting. Elbows out, shoulders down. Don't forget to breathe. Inhale to the top, exhale around to the center, switching your arms. And again, lengthen the spine apart, twist to the other side. Take a breath. Exhale over. Deepen as much as you'd like on this side. Spread your toes, lift your sitting bones, keep your arms still by your ears, 
And make sure the weight's on both feet as evenly as you can. Keep it that way as you work your way back up. And again, a nice upper body dark and only as you're twisting. So remember, shoulders are down, elbows are back, chest is high. And don't lift the chin too much. Keep stretching through the back of your neck. Inhale to the top. Exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, fingertips up in extended mountain. Sink evenly into both feet. Feel your body, what it's telling you. And let's pivot forward with your arms by your ears, pushing those sitting bones back. Get parallel to the floor if you can, stretch it out, and then just drop into ragdoll, hanging with that whole upper body be heavy. Just deepen into that position. Slide your hands up under your knees, straighten everything, elbows, knees, and spine. Spread your toes, lengthen your spine, keep breathing. And exhale, deepening into ragdoll, just hanging. Work your hands over to one side, coming into a little twist. And then back to the center. And then over to the other side, and a little twist, lengthening through the spine as you do it. And back to the center. Pull in a little deeper for that back stretch. And then hands back to the center, hanging as you wind one more time from the bottom of the spine all the way to the top. Feel the circulation through your whole body. And get ready for, oh, let's go into a warrior. So a little energy will be produced by your warrior, so it's going to build that heat in the midsection. And we'll do warrior two. So arms out at your sides at shoulder level, palms toward the floor. Turn your one foot 90 degrees. Keep the hips and shoulders facing the side of your mat. Heel back, toes forward on that other foot. Still, your whole body facing the side. We're going to bend the front knee right above the ankle and make sure you're sinking into your warrior two arms. Still at shoulder level, stretching out. Think about pushing as much weight into that back foot as you can. You can have your feet wide enough apart that this thigh bone is parallel to the floor, or you can be a little bit easier on yourself if you want to with those legs a little closer. Spread your toes, sink your hips straight down, warrior two. Take a moment and breathe, just feel your body. Make sure the weight is on both feet evenly. So if you've got your weight on both feet, it should feel effortless as you're in this position. You're just sinking down, the weight is on both feet, the shoulders are relaxing down, and you're breathing. You can rotate a little bit to look over the front hand and into that classic warrior two position. And then I'm going to bend the back elbow and bring it up next to your jaw. We're going to shoot our bow and arrow. So pull your bow back, bow string back, and then rotate around again. So just feel that midsection moving as you pull back, as you go forward. Breathing with it. And then shoot your bow and come back into your regular warrior two position. Exhale any tension, sink down into those feet. And then straighten your knee in the front, turn your feet to the front, coming into your star position. Go ahead, release your arms from the end. Take a breath. Sink evenly into your feet. So, of course, we're going to balance the body. We're going to shoot our warrior the opposite direction. So, again, the toes start straight ahead. Arms coming up once more to shoulder level. Keep the shoulder, shoulder blades down. Fingertips reaching out, crown up. Keep the core active, making sure your spine is supported. Turning your feet, first the 190 degrees and then the other one to the heel back and to the sport. But make sure you're not turning your whole body. Everything stays facing the side of your mat. And again, bend the front knee right above your ankle. Spread the toes, sink evenly into both feet. Get that weight evenly distributed. 
Shoulders down, crown high. You can again turn your head and look over that front hand. Breathe, feel that core supporting your spine. Exhaling, keep the shoulders and the hips still facing the side of the mat as much as you can. And then bending your elbow, fingertips next to your chin, or pulling it back and breathe. Pulling it back. Just rotating through that midsection of your back. And keeping the arm in front, right shoulder level also. And then shoot your warrior and back into warrior two. Well, I guess you shoot your arrow, don't you? Anyway, back into warrior two. Sinking the hips straight down, keeping those weight on both feet evenly, feeling your body just naturally supported by both feet evenly. Once more, straightening your knee, turning your feet forward, stretching out in your star from your heart all the way through the five points, and release into mountain pose. As you get back into mountain pose, just feel a little bit more energy through your body and to your heart. Look at your hands, and let's work them a little bit first. So push your fingers in one direction, feeling the stretch on the back of the wrist on the hand you're tipping toward. And then back to the center and over to the other side. And just giving yourself just a little bit of pressure into your palms and then back to the center. And then looking at your hands, we'll do our usual back bend. So hands toward the ceiling, looking at your thumbs, pull the thumbs back as you gaze at them, lifting your heart. So a nice back bend through the whole body as much as you'd like. Hips still over your ankles, feet spreading apart through the toes, getting good support. Exhale, pivot forward, hands coming to your heart as you pivot down, and then drop in the ragdoll. Tuck in your chin slightly, feel the back of your neck stretch, and then slide your hands up under your knees, halfway up stretch. Lengthening through the legs, through the spine. Keep those shoulders toward your waist. Take a breath, spread your toes. Exhale, drop in the rag. Take a moment there, pulling your head toward your legs, lifting your sitting bones, getting a stretch on the back of your legs. And then straighten your knees, straighten your spine, bring your arms out at shoulder level. Palms toward the floor, keep them at shoulder level as you pivot up. Turn the palms toward the ceiling. Look overhead and bring the hands together. Another back bend. And exhale to mountain pose. Take a moment as you get there, feeling your body. Let's do our pelvic tilt, just getting that back moving a little bit more. So remember, starting in mountain pose, the toes angle slightly out. Turning your whole legs so the knee and toes are going the same direction still. And then bending your knees right above your toes, hands above your knees, shoulders above your toes. So everything is still straight as much as you can, even though you're slightly bent through the knees and the hips. Straighten your spine and then drop into the back bend. So you're pushing your sitting bones up and back, chest forward, looking for the front. Don't crunch your neck too much. Keep stretching through the full back of your body. Breathe into it, inhaling. And then as you exhale, pull the ribs back, getting that core activated. As you look down, tucking those sitting bones down and forward into the C shape. Inhale, back bend, dropping those ribs and moving the chest forward and tucking down with those Sitting bones forward again as you pull into the crunch and look down. So just moving through the whole pelvis, through the whole body. Remember, not a lot of pressure in the hands. They're just positioning your shoulders right over your toes. Moving into your whole spine motion, back bending and forward. And then the next time you're forward, pause, coming back up. And again, into mountain pose. Feel the stimulation through your spine, a little bit more activated. 
don't forget to breathe. And let's do, oh, let's do a balance practice because, yeah, we need more balance. So pick your favorite balance foot and lift the toes. Make sure the balls of the foot, base of the toe area gets connected as you spread your toes on the ground. So the heel and base of the toes, ball of the foot area supports you evenly. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up so that the knee goes toward that second toe. Remember, you may need to rotate that so that your alignment is correct. Core activate, get those ribs in and up and the shoulders back and down. Sitting bones toward the floor, keeping that pelvis nice and open. Sink into that foot, feel it growing roots. And bring your other foot up. Bring it up toward your heart as much as it wants to go. Keep that foot straight down. So if it's crossing over, remember, roll that knee toward the center so that you're aligned. Work your ankle when you're ready. Circle it both ways, making sure we're staying flexible. And then straighten the foot out, flexing and pointing as you put it back down. Take what worked. Shift it to the other side. So again, make sure your, thing, your leg and ankle and ankle, knee, hip, shoulder line up. Your core is active. Sitting bones, shoulder blades are down. Crown reaching to the ceiling. Everything supported on that rounded foot. Keep those toes spreading out as you bring the other leg up as far as it wants to go. Again, finding your balance, working your ankle when you're ready making sure to allow everything to be where it needs to be, keeping things aligned and working properly. And again, straighten the foot out with the flexing point as you put the foot back on the mat. Exhale any tension. Sink evenly into both feet, spread those toes, keep that core activated. We'll do one more balance. So once more, Get spread out through your balanced foot, either one, whichever works better for you. Bring the other foot up again, and this time bring the ankle to the top of the knee on the other foot, knee out to the side, figure four kind of position, and then squat slightly, coming into just a little bit of a figure four opening through the hip. So keep the spine straight, sink evenly into that foot you're balancing on, and get that knee going down on the bent leg. And then straightening it up, bring the foot back to standard and put it down so that everything straightens out before your back in mountain pose. Take a moment to breathe, exhale any stress or tension from that and shift to your other balance foot. So once again, sinking into your foot, bring the leg up and bring the ankle toward the knee. Knee going out toward the side, gently through that hip, especially if your bursitis is acting up. And then again, squat slightly, coming a little deeper into that hip opening, if it works for you. Keep the spine straight, keep the shoulders relaxed, keep that foot spreading out, supporting you. Exhale, any tension. And then straightening the leg, bring it back down, and again into mountain pose. Exhale, all that balance, stress out, we're done. Hands to your heart. Inhale, bring the hands toward the ceiling, another nice back bend because we love to stretch the spine, swan dive forward, pivot on over, ragdoll, slide the hands up into our halfway up stretch, and then bending your knees, come to the floor, into our child pose transition. Hips back toward your heels, hands palms up at your feet, or head down toward the floor. Take a moment, just feel that spine stretching open, Exhale, just relax. And then inhale, sit up and come into step position. 
And again, sitting bones are behind you. As you do that, press out through your heels, toes up, knees toward the ceiling, and core supporting you. Shoulders back and down, crown up toward the ceiling. And again, with those sitting bones back, bend your leg, bring that foot up right above your ankle or closer toward the thigh, kind of another figure four for opening that hip just a little bit more. Gentle, of course, if your hip is an issue today, just be as gentle as you need to. Remember, the knee never make, needs to make it to the floor. And if you're feeling like it's really tight in this position, bring that leg over to the side. That makes it a little bit easier. Or you can pad behind you as well. So go ahead, do what's right for your body. You can add a little weight, but never pressure. When you add pressure, that just tenses things up, makes it harder. So go ahead, relax that leg as much as it wants to today. Just releasing any tightness in that hip joint. And bringing your foot and knee into your hands or pulling your leg in closer with your arms wrapped around. Move back and forth, getting things loosened up a little bit more in the hip. Take a moment and breathe. Keep the shoulders above your hips. Relax them down, shoulder blades toward your waist. The crown toward the ceiling. Stretch that spine out. And then releasing that leg back to the center. Feel the difference on the two hips. So yeah, we've got a match balancing the other side. So go ahead, bring the other foot up toward the thigh or above the knee. Just letting the knee again come toward the mat as much as it wants, just gently. Knee and toes up on the front leg or over to the side, but the knee and toes are still up, remember. And this leg just gently goes toward the floor. May never make it, that's okay. That's just where your hips are. So remember, you can pad if you need to to make it feel less stressful as well, but just give yourself a little weight, never pressure if you want a little bit more activation through that hip. Always personal practice, doing what's right for your body today. And bringing the foot and knee up or wrapping your arms around, pull it in and rotate, moving back and forth, giving a little bit more fluidity maybe through that hip. Take a moment and breathe. Exhale any tension. And then release that foot back to the center into staff position, bringing the feet to the end of the mat. Core active, sitting on slightly behind you, and roll slightly all the way to the floor, coming into the common center position. Sitting bones toward your heels, press your back gently down and bring your heels in or right next to your sitting bones, feet flat and knees straight up toward the seat. Press the back just gently down. We're gonna do another figure four version. So bring your foot up and put the ankle on that opposite above that opposite knee. Hand to the knee, just press it away. Again, just letting that hip work gently. Bring the other foot off the floor. Keep pressing away with the hand on the knee, just gently, not a lot of pressure, just letting it open that hip a little more. You can take the other hand behind the thigh or around the shin and pull the leg in as you push the other hand away on the knee. So just deepen as much into that opening as you want through your hip. Keep the back just gently down. It can have a little curve to the bottom of the spine if it wants to, that's okay. Take a breath, just relaxing those hips. And then bring your foot to the floor, bring your other leg up and out, straightening it, and put it back down next to the other one, hip with a hinge. Feel the difference, of course, on the two sides, observing your body's response. Sitting bones again, slightly down toward your heel as you press down, other foot coming up and crossing the ankle above the knee, and pressing gently out. And of course, stay there if that's enough, or lift the foot, hand behind the thigh or around the shin to pull it in even further, if you like that work 
through the hip joint. So doing what's right for your body today, just gently getting that knee pressing out as much as it wants to, opening through the hip, working it at your own pace. Take a breath, maximizing or minimizing whatever's right for you. And then bringing the foot to the floor, straighten the leg out, and bring the foot back in. Take a moment there with the knees bent, body up, back pressing down, and bring your arms to T position so we can do our bent knee twist. So bringing your knees up, or feet up off the floor. If you want a little bit more hip work, you can cross your leg over the other one and then roll over to the side. Knees at hip level. Otherwise, keep the knees right next to each other as you go into your twist. Head turning toward the arm behind you. Palms up or down, your choice. Whatever seems best for your shoulders today. Just bringing the knees over toward the floor as much as they want to go. If you need to, remember pad under the knee so that it's more gentle through the low back and hip. Otherwise, just let those knees go as far as they want, bringing gravity into it. Oh, never force anything. Put the shoulders down, middle back twist, head turning, neck area twist, just doing what's right for your body. Exhale any tension, just let it happen. Never force your twist. And then bringing the heels toward your hips, roll onto your back. If you cross that leg, uncross and straighten. Feet up again, knees over your hips. Cross the leg the other way if you want to roll in the twist. Otherwise, keep the knees together as you go into your twist. Again, knee coming toward the floor as you turn your head toward that opposite shoulder. Arms down, shoulders on the floor for your middle back twisting. Knee coming with gravity toward the floor, padding if you need it in that lower back twist. Head turning, that's the neck area twist. Don't go too far if you've got an issue there. Always just breathing and relaxing into your position, wherever your body needs to go. Exhale, relaxing, deepening. And of course, we can't hold any longer because we need to relax. So rolling onto your back, if you've got your legs crossed, uncross them, feet to the floor, and sliding out. Feet hip width apart, bring those toes together to start, and then relax. Hands rotating next to your hips, palms up, shoulders and shoulder blades down to the mat. A little natural curve to your spine, that spine, just relax your whole spine. Soften your face and just allow your whole body just to sink deeper into that surface beneath you. Take a breath. Exhale, just let your body go. Releasing especially through the hips, lots of work there today. Exhale, just relax completely through the lower body and the torso and your face. Shoulders down, deepen into that body connection to the earth, just letting your body grow heavy, sink deep, letting it go. As your body relaxes, just allow thoughts of your body to release, just letting it relax normally, naturally and letting your thoughts normally, naturally drift away. And know that other thoughts will come to your mind as you release thoughts of your body, so just let them drift away as well. There's no need to think about the past or anticipate the future. No need to remember the content of any thoughts. Just let the mind drift as easily as your breath. Allowing your awareness to release your body and your mind. And just allow that awareness to turn inward, finding the peace within. Feel your body, feel your mind, feel your being just with peace.
course, if you have time to keep relaxing today, just take the time. If it's time, though, to get ready for the rest of your day, begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however it feels good for you today. Breathing more fully and stretching more completely as you are ready to do so. And of course, when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, back pressing gently down as you bring your heels toward your hips and your knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself an appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready, bring your head and feet to the floor, roll to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for the rest of your world today. Thanks for joining me.